Okay, so because I had uh, made a promise uh, to Attorney Posadas to, to be given a to have uh, to deliver, I mean, his uh, privilege speech early in the morning before our guest arrived. So now I am giving the floor to Attorney Posadas to say something about the resolution he is mentioning. Uh, okay, thank Attorney you. Posadas, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I stand now to be recognized for a proposed uh, joint resolution, uh, resolution for a revolutionary government. Okay, go ahead. Attorney Posadas, you are recognized. Yes. I am uh, proposing a resolution for a joint revolutionary government organizations and individual Filipino citizens to actually and virtually invoke President Rodrigo Duterte's constitutional oath of office duty to redress superior people's will or grievances urgently on the Comelec Smartmatic tandem and most aptly and timely to uproot deeply entrenched government <clears throat> and oligarchic corruptions and now oppressions, suppressions, and impositions on citizens' civil or property rights or privacy rights under the expired national or health <clears throat> emergency law, leading now into an unconsented, unconstitutional law to impose or force pandemic vaccinations. These are, in fact, effects caused by the current presidential centralized form of government under the de facto 1987 constitution. Whereas in fact, you, Mr. President, as our president on important occasions stated that you have seen the enemies and its friends in synchrony with encircled deep corruption you challenge all Filipinos and the armed forces of the Philippines if we can unify our grievances for once in our lifetime binded as a nation to strengthen your categorical mission impossible to uproot entrenched corruption cordon. Whereas only by either a declaration of an indirect transition government or as an FP as an armed forces of the Philippines commander-in-chief, shift of allegiance on the promulgated pure Filipino 1899 constitution, that we as a nation at last can completely and logically change the cause or system or form of government. Otherwise, all these patriotism blood, sweat, and tears of our forefathers would be in vain all over again, or nothing changes at all because the effects or characteristic infections would remain under the same system or 1987 constitutional cause of governments. Whereas we too are wiser enough now as you are, while still our president for the last time than to let history and our desperate destiny to slip through the exigent threats to our lives and health under grips of force fears obtaining in our midst. For you are our last light in the tunnel of our tomorrows and our final beacon of hope for generations to come, or otherwise are we to expect different results again till kingdom come? We therefore unify or jointly invoke your constitutional out of office duty to redress our finally solidified grievances for a complete and logical change into a parliamentary federal form of government system. And aptly and timely, indeed, urgently for now, that you are imposing an expired national emergency law. We are also invoking our most superior people's will to contractually enforce a deadline on or before October 2021 filing of the 2022 elections candidacy, either for you 
to fulfill or shirk from your president's duty. Otherwise, it would trigger people's contractual rights to mitigate anticipatory irreparable or irreversible damages on our people's future by instances of boycotting the national elections of 2022. You and our people are both contractually bound by the 1987 Constitution to perform respective duties to abide by the provisions of the highest law of the land. You have sworn to defend and protect against all enemies of our nation. At last in our lifetime, now or never again, with the same results or effects from the same constitutional cause. While we await for your performance of oath of office duty or shirk as an anticipatory dereliction of duty until the end of October, this serves also as a judicial notice to the Philippine Supreme Court. And this is to be actually signed by respective leaders and individual, individual citizens and uh, OFF, OFWs on translated printed hard copies virtually and on moveon.org. So therefore, resolve and so be it resolved on this day of August 7, 2021, by the shadow of Congress of the 1899, the jure, pure, and promulgated Filipino Constitution. Proposed resolution read on August 7, 2021, by the proponent and author of this resolution. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Now I'm open for interpolation. Uh, thank you, Attorney Pusadas. And uh, uh, Professor Hill, uh, do you have something to interpolate, uh, Attorney Posadas? <clears throat> yes, um, I asked to be given the floor. Yes, you are. Uh, you, are you have the floor now. For the uh, edification of those who are new to our group as well, uh, Mr. Posadas, can you uh, explain? Can the speaker explain, Mr. President? Why do you say that the 1899 Constitution is our only Dehori Constitution? Uh, again, is our holy what? Why did you say that it is a de jure constitution, 1899 constitution? Oh, the only de jure Filipino constitution. Yes. Because it was the only pure people's will constitution, first in the, in the uh, as a republic in Asia. And there was no intervention nor influence by any foreign entity or country. Uh, but and members still, the, profession. the jury is still valid and alive because it continues on as a constitution. But uh, the uh, members of our legal profession only recognized the 1935 constitution as the start of our constitutional law. Is that correct? Well, it was recognized as a de facto constitution back then because the constitution, the 1899 constitution, although it's still valid and alive and promulgated, was uh, um, shelved uh, by the side uh, for the intervention of foreign entities. Would you agree to call the American, uh, the 1935 constitution as an American puppet constitution imposed on the Filipino people? Yes, you could say that, yes. How about the uh, Laurel Constitution of 1942? Would you call that a Japanese puppet constitution imposed on the people? It's the same. It's still a, a foreign uh, a country that occupied the Philippines imposing uh, and influencing a Philippine uh, People's Will Constitution. How about the restored Commonwealth Constitution when the Japanese were, uh, <coughs> were uh, defeated? Uh, and uh, we were we were uh, told to uh, pass and the uh, the Laurel Langley Treaty, which uh, virtually amended our constitution. Uh, would you would you call that another sort of puppet constitution or a parity rights constitution, which was imposed on us by um, American uh, supremacy? Correct. There was there was never. Uh, since the beginning of the uh, 1899 constitution, there's never been another pure Filipino wills constitution. So everything that uh, succeeded after that did not abolish nor 
uh, cite any provision of its own to abrogate and abolish the 1899 Constitution. And uh, how about the 1973 or the 1971-1973 Constitution that was uh, imposed during martial law? What do you think of it? Well, even if it was, there was an attempt by President Marcos to, to form a parliamentary federal government, it was uh, again shelled by its own people, by some uh, uh, intervention, so to speak, of uh, Filipinos themselves to not continue with the federal parliamentary government constitution of suggested by uh, ordered, as a matter of fact, by president, even ordered as uh, president uh, by President Marcos. But the, <coughs> Fernan the Fernando, the Fernando Supreme Court uh, mentioned that uh, there is no um, legal impediment to the um, <clears throat> imposition or to the um, of the 1973 Constitution. Does that make it our legal Filipino Constitution? No, it's a self-serving con conclusion without any basis at all. Well, it, got, like it did to... not come from any assembly of pure Filipinos' will. Well, I would like to have a point of information and historical information that during the time of uh, President Marcos' imposition of uh, martial law and subsequent uh, promulgation of the 1973 constitution, the world was governed by the Nixon-Kissinger doctrine. Nixon was the president of the United States. Kissinger was the secretary of state, the national security advisor. And Kissinger was uh, adopting a process of adopting strongmen all over the world to resist communist aggression. And that is the time when uh, you had Park Chung-hee, uh, strongman rule, you also had uh, uh, Sal uh, Salvador Allende overturned, overturned and overthrown by uh, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, by, by General Penuquit. So uh, would you consider the pattern of the imposition of uh, strongman rule by Marcos also part of that Nixon Kissinger doctrine? Well, there are parallels, but uh, still, uh, whether domestic uh, intervention or foreign intervention, it was tampered with and not really been uh, approved and ratified by a pure Filipino Congress. Okay, how about the 1987 constitution of uh, Cory Aquino? Was that uh, a, um, an in a really independent uh, constitution forged by the Filipino people? No. I would say that it's not, it's, it's a de facto constitution because it's in, in the place of a vacuum, there has to be a constitution that will, as the highest land, uh, uh, rule, uh, love the land to rule and govern uh, our people. Uh, do you think that uh, uh, if Marcos was not uh, abducted by the Americans to Hawaii, would Cory be able to declare a revolutionary government and create the 1987 constitution? Well, that is a uh, probability because given the situation where there are two leaders, it would uh, at, at the very least create a constitutional crisis, if not civil war. Yes, so uh, there is some <clears throat> dubiousness about the 1987 constitution as well. Correct. How about the 1989 coup d'etat of Gringo Honasan, wherein he controlled the... Uh, uh, resources of the military and was bombing Malacanang, and then the Americans intervened to protect the 1987 constitution. That does not make this a an American protectorate constitution, the Act of 1987 constitution. Uh, since there was an apparent and actual intervention recorded and documented, yes, I would say it is. Uh, a foreign dominated or intervened uh, uh, constitution. So because of all these facts, you only consider the 1899 constitution as the only legitimate constitution of the Philippines. Correct. And you Nothing are basing- Correct, go ahead. In, and you are basing your uh, current uh, sponsored resolution on that fact. Yes, exactly. Does, does that not make us all subversives here in this forum? That's that what make us what? 
subversives or people no. inciting to sedition because you are doing that. Because if we, approve, we have been if we approve your resolution, does that make us all uh, uh, subversives and seditious people according to the existing laws? Yes. Citing a provision in the Constitution is not a call for sedition. It is a call for a change in the form of government. Sedition is uh, to change the president or the person himself. But to change the system, which is a right of the people's will, so more superior people's will, to change the system of government is not at all sedition. So on what on what do you base your resolution? On the 1987 Constitution or on the 1899 Constitution? Well, we have to go by the current de facto Constitution because that's the only Constitution that's governing us. So therefore, we have to cite its own provision, even if it's a de facto Constitution. Uh, yes, uh, and in fact, you are in, in a sense disrespecting the Constitution, or the 1987 Constitution, but just recognizes it as a de facto Constitution, correct? Correct. And uh, what do you call the imposition of uh, the constructive resignation doctrine of Hilario Davide in the coup d'etat against ERA? Was that not a violation of the same Constitution, the 1987 Constitution? Yes, that's a question begging for an answer. There's no such thing as constructive resignation. A resignation of a president is either documented or uh, given freely by the president, by the incumbent president himself, and uh, uh, documented with a letter to the Congress of the Philippines. There's no, no such was, thing as implied constructive uh, resignation. So it was a pure codita, and they patched up the constitution. And this current constitution is no longer the 1987 constitution ratified in 1987, but the patch up 2001 constitution. Correct? Yes. Put it in another way. Yes, exactly. And the current disrespect of the Congress, which for 10, for so many years, 30 years, ignored the provision of this 1987 constitution to enact a political dynasty law. Is that not the same uh, <clears throat> level of disrespect to this constitution? Yes, they could be considered uh, foreign and domestic and national interference, both by foreigners and Filipinos themselves conspiring, so to speak. So by their ignoring this political dynasty provision of the Constitution and not enacting any law in Congress, the Congress, in fact, violated the spirit of the Constitution, correct? Yes, correct. And this uh, current uh, condition of COVID, wherein we are supposed to be under emergency, and we have an article, Dose, in the 1987 Constitution, calling on the president to take over public utilities, to mitigate the suffering of the people, and he's not doing it. Is he also in violation of the Constitution? Yeah, it's a dereliction of duty to, uh, when he applies a national emergency law, that means that he has to take over for emergency purposes, all public utilities and resources, which he violated by not declaring it, um, by not uh, imposing on the restrictions under an emergency law. Now it's too late because you cannot use the national emergency law to do so and uh, take over by, um, by the national government uh, over the facilities and resources uh, of the oligarchs, so to speak. Why would your representation consider this uh, already too late for him to do anything about it? Because uh, technically and constitutionally, the uh, national emergency law has expired. It's only valid for six terms to be renewed by a letter of request to the Congress or a report to Congress. And uh, he has may, not done so. You may be referring to the medical emergency that he has been uh, doing uh, <clears throat> intermittently, which has not really been allowed by the Congress anymore because the first imposition was way beyond six months, correct? Correct. But I am referring to the Article of Dose, which is an extant provision of the 1987 Constitution, which allows him to take over uh, the utilities for water and the utilities for electric uh, <clears throat> service to be able to mitigate the suffering of the people, but he's not doing it. And you said that is at the reduction of duty, correct? Correct. And that's what the resolution is asking for now. 
So because of our uh, conversation on this 1987 constitution and what is being done and not being done, in fact, the political class of the country is uh, just treating this paper constitution as toilet paper and not really a real constitution, not a living constitution, correct? Well, with due respect to it, it serves as our de facto constitution. Once it's uh, been uh, uh, shifted from by the 1899 constitution, then that's what it is. It will just be uh, on paper. Okay, that is the basis of your uh, resolution, the one you're sponsoring. You are really invoking the writ of the 1899 constitution, correct? That's the only legal constitution of the country. Correct, to the point, exactly, precisely. Okay, so I, um, I'm done with my interpolation. I did that to clarify the issues and the basis of your resolution. Others can proceed to interpolate you as well. Thank you, Mr. Speaker uh, Lorke. I withdraw my uh, uh, the table. I return the <clears throat> forum to you. Thank you, Professor Boots. Uh, anybody? would say something.